Hello guys, it's me, Schizo Saint, your favorite Mountain Jew, and today we're gonna be going over my rifle. This is the rifle that I have decided to build, and I am finally done with it. After switching out almost every original part on the gun that this used to be, I think I can finally say that my rifle is complete. Now, this rifle is not gonna be like most ARs you've seen. This rifle probably looks pretty unique. You're probably looking at the part choices on this rifle and thinking either, hey, that's pretty unique, that's pretty cool, or you're just flat out disgusted. But don't worry, I have a good explanation for all of them, I promise. Let's start from the butt, of course. Originally, this rifle was a SIG M400 Predator. I was gonna do a full review on that rifle specifically, but let me just get it done right now and tell you that is a terrible buy. Basically, I bought it because I really like the aesthetics of the rifle, but as I started hiking and actually using my weapon, I realized that aesthetics don't really matter that much. What matters is functionality. And so the grip, the stock, and the handguard are all new. And those were literally the only things that made that rifle unique. Allegedly, SIG wanted to optimize it for hunting and they advertised it using a suppressor and all of that. But uh, that rifle is not optimized for a suppressor. It doesn't have an adjustable gas block. The buffer system is just a normal rifle buffer system. So even though I really liked the way it looked, I started to really hate it. <laughs> and not to mention that the receiver set is actually missing. Mat. It's kind of hard to tell on camera, but yeah, there is a big ledge there and there is a big ledge there as well. And so I paid a thousand dollars for it and basically I got something that was completely gimped from the factory and less effective than your average AR. Now, to be fair, this rifle has been literally 100% reliable. I have put only about 800 rounds or so through this gun, but it hasn't jammed once. So I gotta give him credit for that. But honestly, I think the credit goes to Eugene Stoner, not Sig. <laughs> but anyway, let's go over what I have done to this gun. First thing I did was change out the stock for the Magpul CTR stock and an Aero Precision uh, buffer tube and buffer weight system. This gun shoots extremely smooth. I also switched out the SIG grip for the Magpul K2 grip. Now, the, one of the unexpected benefits of switching to the Magpul K2 grip is that the safety on this side does not interfere with your trigger finger. On the original SIG grip, this uh, safety would dig into my finger just like that. However, the Magpul K2 grip moves your grip down just enough to get it out of the way. So it's pretty good. So yeah, if you own a SIG M400 rifle and you don't like the safety getting in the way, just get a Magpul K2 grip and that should fix the problem basically immediately. Another thing that I did was originally I had a SIG Romeo 7 on top, as many of you know. However, there's a few problems with that. One is that having just a red dot on your one AR-15 is not a good idea. It is not versatile. It's not going to allow you to observe and do all sorts of other things with your weapon like a prism optic or a normal scope would. And another issue with the Romeo 7 is that it literally shut off under recoil. Uh, in one of my armed expeditions, I talk about that. I think it's the, the flower one. So if you want to see that, go watch that armed expedition. But anyway, got rid of that. And what I replaced it with was this incredible optic stack. Now I'm actually going to do a, a whole other video on this optic stack, but this basically weighs as much as an Aimpoint Pro while providing me 5X magnification and a normal red dot capability as well. And this gets me 5x magnification, so a little bit better than an ACOG, and I still get my red dot with a lot of battery life. Now granted, it's a pistol red dot, so you never really know if the battery life is what they advertise, but hey, I have a really good 1x that is night vision capable, assuming I get night vision at some point, cross our fingers, and I get a really effective etched reticle, super lightweight 5x. So yeah, I'm gonna do a whole video on this optic stack eventually, but suffice it to say, if you're looking for a lightweight optic solution that is very versatile. I really don't think it gets better than this unless you go with ACOG, but again, that's this whole video. Let's keep going with the upgrades here. So this is the Odinworks Rune Handguard. Now, it looks pretty cool. It's got like, you know, kind of, uh, it's got some aesthetic choices. Now, honestly, like I said, I don't think aesthetics really matter that much with your rifle. What matters is, is it lightweight, is it durable, is it reliable, and is it capable of doing a lot of things? And, um, you know, this handguard is certainly an upgrade from the original handguard, which was was way too heavy. However, it doesn't have a QD cut back here. I don't really care that there's no M-Lock since 
There's literally no reason to mount anything back here on an M-Lock slot, but um, I really wish there was a QD cup. So what I had to do was I had to get some Magpul parts and attach my own. So a little annoying, but it is a problem I was able to overcome. I also got this uh, this rail for like only like 50 bucks. So that was a total steal. Now let's go over my light. Okay, this is a Streamlight ProTac handheld light. It's 850 lumens. Uh, so pretty dang good, not the best, but I got it on sale for 40 bucks. I also put it in this Magpul clamp, which was only 30 bucks. So for $70, I have something that is approximately as effective as the dedicated rifle mounted, rifle mounted cousin of this light, the HLX. Now it should be said that this this light uh, normally goes for about $70. So if I paid a hundred bucks for this solution, it wouldn't be worth it since that's literally the price that the rifle mounted ProTac series goes for. So if you're looking to do something approximating this build, I would definitely just go with the standard Streamlight setup. However, I was going for something that was cost effective at the time of picking out this light. And honestly, obviously it's in the middle of the morning, so you're not gonna be able to tell. But honestly, it's pretty dang effective. I can shoot this light. With this light, I can illuminate about 100 yards in front of me, and it's got a little bit of spill. And last but not least is the, of course, A2 birdcage. The original SIG M400 did not come with any kind of muzzle device. Again, the idea was is that you suppress it for when you go hunting. Again, that rifle's not optimized for a suppressor, so I don't know why SIG did that, but anyway, I had to add my own. Now, it's not that big of a deal, and honestly, the A2 birdcage is literally the best muzzle device, unless you need a suppressor quick detach system, in which case, obviously, you're free to do whatever you want, but yeah, obviously, suppresses flash well. I've heard these even have a little bit of a compensating effect, although I can't say I've ever noticed, but yeah. Now, there's something else I want to talk about in this video. Travis Haley has a really good YouTube short. You should look it up. But basically, he says, when we're going over our rifles. You shouldn't be... Did you hear that? That's just a paranoid moment. Anyway, all right, well, it'll be really interesting if this video ever gets uploaded. Real quick, guys, I know I'm cutting into this rifle overview. All my latest videos take place in the woods by Yellowstone National Park. And I know Yellowstone has a lot of like mythos to it or whatever. I have never, ever, ever had that sort of spooky feeling when I'm in those woods. When I'm in these woods, these woods are closer to Jackson Hole. I always get like a spooky feeling when I come out here. And uh, we're actually gonna go investigate something down there for my next video. Anyway. <laughs> Let's get back to the rifle overview. Travis Haley has a really good YouTube short where he basically says, instead of talking about the parts choices on your rifle, you should be talking about what your rifle is capable of. And I think that's perfect. I think that's exactly right. When we're thinking about our guns, we shouldn't be thinking Geisley or Midwest. We should be thinking, can I use this gun with night vision? Can I use this gun at night at all? Can I be effective out to four to 500 yards with this gun? And am I still effective at 100 yards. Can I hike with this rifle? There is all sorts of things that your rifle needs to be capable of doing. And if you only have one AR-15, it needs to be as flexible as humanly possible. Because as a civilian, we do not get to decide when, where, and why we have to use our AR. That is gonna be decided by forces outside of our control. And so we have to make sure that our AR-15 is effective in home defense. We have to make sure it's effective for hiking 50 miles if we have to. We have to make sure it's effective for securing a rooftop. We have to make sure it's effective for taking down a threat at 300 yards. You have to make sure it's capable of taking down a threat at one yard. So there's all sorts of things your rifle needs to be capable of doing. I'm happy to say I have a rifle that assuming the proper skills on my part is capable of doing all of that. Fully loaded with a Magpul PMAG loaded with 55 grain, this rifle weighs less than nine pounds, which honestly is more impressive than it sounds. I've seen a lot of ARs with just a red dot that weigh more than 10 pounds, believe it or not. Hello guys, so for reasons unknown to me, my audio file and my video file just kind of randomly stopped recording on my GoPro Hero 8. If any of you guys have had similar issues, uh, let me know in the comments. It's pretty strange. Anyway, the point I was trying to make is make sure you have a rifle that makes sense for you and your circumstance and your situation. That concludes the rifle overview, guys. If you want to support the channel, visit Civilian Expedition Outfitters in the description and, cat and grab yourself some stickers. Otherwise, I would love it if you subscribed and liked the video. Guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. Hope to catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.